Let's look at manipulating power series. Uh, once you have a power series for one function, you can get a power series for a lot of other functions, and you can do things with power series. And I'm just going to mainly focus on examples, um, but if you look in any textbook, you're going to see that you can differentiate a power series, what you'd call term by term, basically just as if it was a polynomial. You can integrate them. you got to remember the plus C, uh, but you can integrate them term by term. And when you're doing these operations, you want to make sure you are within the interval of convergence, and especially for a differentiation, it might actually turn something that's convergent at an endpoint to something that's not convergent, so watch out. Um, but if you're properly within, not at the endpoints, all these things are going to be legal. Uh, you can multiply by a polynomial most often. Um, it's something simple like 7x squared or something like that, a monomial. You can substitute a monomial in for x. You can substitute a polynomial in too, but it's going to be much, much, much messier to figure out what's going on. So you can put in x squared for x. That's very common. We'll do one of those. That will uh, usually change the radius of convergence, so you have to be careful about that. Um, and you could always take a power series in x and just everywhere you see an x, put an x minus 3 or an x plus 7. That's going to shift the function, just like that does to any function. Um, and of course, it's going to shift the interval of convergence. So lots of, of operations we can do. Basically, the idea is anything reasonable basically anything reasonable to do to a function that still ends up with a power series, an overgrown polynomial. So things you wouldn't be uh, doing usually is like divide by x cubed. That's going to put in like 1 over x cubed, negative powers of x. Those are not legal in power series. They're different kinds of objects. Um, so anything that produces negative powers of x, that's not staying within power series. And don't put in like things like square root of x or something like that um, and produce things that are functions, you, you, the point is that not every series involving x is a power series. It has to actually be just a sum of non-negative powers of x times coefficients. So watch out for that. Don't do anything and call it a power series. Okay, so let's do an example. Um, I'm going to find a power series for this funky function, x cubed times the inverse tangent of minus uh, x squared. Okay, so we want to work up to this. The core function uh, is what is inverse tangent of x. And this is a classic example. It's in most textbooks, certainly is ours. But I'll review. How, how would you get a power series for this? Well, the key is to remember, since we can differentiate or integrate, we want to think, is the derivative or the integral of this simpler than, than this function? And in indeed, the derivative of this is much, much simpler. And that's equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, that in turn is 1 over 1 minus a minus x squared, and that's where we make contact with the geometric series. This is one of our primary examples. 1 over 1 minus x is one of the simplest patterns ever. It's just the sum of x to the k. Now, this is where we want to, as soon as we write down a series, we want to either test it or remember a previously done test, and that's where the absolute value of x is less than 1. This really doesn't make sense to try to calculate this function unless you're in that setting. But <clears throat> as long as we stay in there, it's going to be fine. OK, so now we're going to put this together. We know that this, 1 over 1 minus x, it has a known power series. OK, and so I can do a sub here. This is just what I get when I sub in a minus x squared into here. OK, sometimes we'd like to sort of separate out the coefficient part, which is a minus 1 to the k. Notice that that is based on which term you're at, albeit starting with 0, which is common. So we'll start with a plus sign. And then the coefficient is actually x to the 2k. If When you're doing this, if you ever are remotely confused or if you just want to see it out more explicit, um, you, you want to do <clears throat> just write out the first few terms, the dot, dot, dot style. Okay, that's really, really useful. <clears throat> so we've just taken the 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed that was here, and everywhere there was an x, you, get, you take a 1 minus, you, you, you put in a minus x squared. So that's cool. Nice thing here is that it's alternating coefficients, and the even signs for x mean that whatever you put in for x, it's going to be positive except for the alternation. That's a very nice thing about this particular series. Okay, now what's the, uh, the radius of convergence? Um, the coefficients haven't been changed except the signs, and that never matters except at the endpoints. And um, all that's changed is an x squared has been put in. So this is going to be, oops, ooh, that's not what I want. Um, this is going to still be true whenever x squared is less than 1. 
Um, and of course, that's the same thing. The absolute value of x squared being less than 1 is the same as absolute value of x being less than 1. So this is a very special example of a substitution that didn't change it, because 1 is such a special number, and I didn't put it in a coefficient. You could also just do the, the radius from scratch here, but you shouldn't have to. OK, so I'm still not done. That was equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. OK, so I need the integral of that. So let's go to a new display. Integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx is going to be the integral of all this stuff dx. And I'll worry about the constant in a minute. So one way to say this is that within the interval of convergence, away from the endpoints, you can exchange a limit and a sum. And that's pretty cool. And really, there's a limit implicit in the definition of the integral. And of course, there's a limit implicit in the definition of summation, uh, the infinite summation. And so really, you're exchanging two limits. That's what's deep about this. And that's why it can screw up some places, like at the endpoints. It's actually kind of amazing you can do this. Um, oh, but that's easy, right? The constant comes out. The coefficient comes out as a constant as far as the integration is concerned. And you just get, and in the book, in certain, in Stewart's book, it's just presented as a, a pat formula. Just add one to the coefficient, the powers, and then divide by um, what you just what you just put in as the new power. Very standard. OK, if you want, oh, and we haven't dealt with plus c yet, but let's do that in a second. If you want it written out, you can either take that summation notation that you did um, and re repackage it without the summations, or you could go straight back to, if you have a previous version of this, um, just integrate this. And sometimes that can be a little bit um, easier to think about, and definitely summation notation definitely can be tricky. And so here we're getting a very nice pattern. We're getting an alternating, oops, this is a 7, alternating odd powers, and then it's just divided by the power you're writing down. Some of your very nice properties are. Now, it could be a plus C, right? This could also be a plus C. So is that what something we need? You just plug in x equals 0 to find out. Well, we know what we really wanted was not just any antiderivative of this. We wanted to get uh, inverse tangent. And then we'll play with it a little more. An inverse tangent of 0 is 0. This series, notice it starts with an x to the 1, and we're seeing that very explicitly here. So this thing naturally evaluates to 0 anyway. And so this is a special case where we actually can say, oh, the plus c for this case is going to be 0. But in general, you want to do a little check and just plug in the base point. You always plug in the base point. You should know what the function is at the base point, or else you really shouldn't probably be doing this. And that's going to give you the plus c. OK, so we're, we're getting there. This is just a re-derivation of inverse tangent, but it's worthwhile to see that. Now, let's we do another substitution step. We'll plug in minus x squared. Oh, sorry. OK. So now we're doing another sub, and I'll do it both ways. I'll do it here. Um, so that's going to be minus x squared again there. OK. Um, and then we can simplify it a little bit. So that squared, that's going to make it a 4k plus 2. So we're only going to get certain kinds of powers, everything that's a multiple of 4 plus 2. And then the minus sign, notice what the, oops, sorry about that. It's flipping around. Minus sign, that's not guaranteed to be an odd power. So the minus sign actually goes away. Um, or it just turns into just an overall minus. It does. It's minus sign to an odd power is always a minus. So we can just incorporate that. That's an one extra minus sign. So that's interesting. Okay, and now, and that's about as simple as we can get. If we do it with the dot dot dots, again, you can do it with the summation notation, then unpack it. Good practice. But if you already have this version, we're just going to put in everywhere a minus x squared. I'm not saying you have to do it both ways unless somebody requires you to do it. But I always like to show without the summations because they can really hide some of the intuition and people tend to get confused by them. Okay, same deal though. Um, here, this shows maybe a little more clearly, hey, that's a minus x squared. And then minus um, <clears throat> to an odd power, that's just gonna be a minus, but then that changes that to plus. And we're getting x to the 6 over 3. 
Now, it's plus, but wait, minus to one power is a minus. Okay. And then x to the 10 over 5. And then a minus to one power changes this guy. So all those signs, it's not like a new pattern of signs. It's still alternating, but just we've flipped which ones are plus or which ones are minus. And, of course, we've changed the powers. Okay. Um, and the next one's going to be a minus. Okay. And then last but not least, well, actually least, we're going to multiply by x cubed. Just to show one more transformation. That's easiest of all here. Subbing in is not like it's hard, but um, multiplying by a power is not hard at all. Actually, this time, I'll, maybe I'll show you this way first, and then we'll see how it looks with the summation notation. And then we'll take a break, do another video on uh, two more examples. So that's just going to be boost up the power by three. So this is a cool. It's not incredibly weird pattern, but it's a kind of a random pattern. And it's interesting to see this is this function. Oh, yeah, and I wanted the summation notation. When you have it in summation notation, you're just going to be multiplying the entire thing by x cubed. And just like we saw before a minute ago, that's just going to boost up all those powers by 5. Okay.